Welcome back. I'm still with Brita Marcella Tolini. They say once a queen, always a queen. Fortunately enough, she wasn't dethroned. You only get dethroned when you know what happens. So, Brita, <laughs> as you're explaining, uh, you, 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 you touched on UNED not getting the full support of the nation when you went for, for, for the pageant, uh, Miss Malaika. But we were surprised coming back home and everyone else was running behind you. Mm. What would you say uh, to the corporate world or to everyone else who's watching we had a similar uh, scenario with the, our netball team, the Gems. They didn't have the best condition in their preparations. But when they made it to the international stage, mm -hmm. everyone else wanted to be part of them. And everyone else tweeted about them. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to someone who's watching right now? I think as a nation, we need to be more proactive mm -hmm. than reactive. It's, it's sad because we've got so much talent in this country in every domain we can think of. And uh, our conditions are very difficult uh, in the times that we live in. But a little bit goes a long way versus doing nothing at all. And I think any time we're about to send ambassadors out, we really need to rally behind them. But even if we're not sending them out, we should be preparing our children we should be pre preparing uh, our talented people to be able to take on um, you know, those roles to become ambassadors at some point in their lives. It's all part of building this country. So we shouldn't be reactionary, like I said. We should be more proactive in assisting. Sometimes it's not maybe financial. It's just giving the little equipment that you might have, even coming in to encourage and you know, giving some moral support so that they know that they're still okay. Because it actually, we say it deflates your, your, your confidence when you don't have people rallying behind you because you start questioning, what am I really doing this for? But thankfully, when you look at the gems, it's their hearts for me that really stood out and that they had a passion for what they did and they were prepared to do whatever it took to get to the world stage. And I think it's, it's carried in a lot of champions in this country who've had to to follow the same uh, route to get to you know, the international levels where they've got a love for what they do and whatever it would take, they would fight to get there. Right, uh, st still on that, I believe, and I, I always say this, we always celebrate with someone when they make it in life, but no one is really willing to help them when they're starting the journey. Mm -hmm. Probably no one will believe, no one will have the same vision like, like they, 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 they did. So as a nation, we really need to start understanding or we really need to start supporting our ambassadors when we send them out there because they're carrying mm -hmm. not only their, 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 their dreams and aspirations, they're carrying the whole nation. Mm -hmm. So I, I want you to, 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 to highlight some darkest moments in your career mm -hmm. as a pageant. Mm -hmm. some, uh, some very disturbing moments that you had, you, you almost thought of, you know what, I, I, sh I should give up. I'll give you an illustration of after Miss Zimbabwe, 1999. It's like you become forgotten. And it happens across the world. It's something that is, you know, very common. So people, you're in the limelight today, tomorrow you're out. So it's more like you're discarded. So you start to realize that, look, this was just for a season. And maybe there were things that I could have done differently. One year is not enough to fulfill uh, your obligations, but at the same time, people forget you very easily. So between the period of Miss Zimbabwe and Miss Malaika, it was a really tough uh, time for me, because even preparing to go for Miss Malaika as well, we had to source the little things that we could to make sure that I was able to go there. And the driving factor for me was that I had the little bit of support from family and friends who came through and said like, we know you can do this here. So, in that, there was a lot to think about and say, what is this going to be doing for me going forward uh, if I win this? Even if I don't win it, what is the takeaway from an event like this year if I manage to make it to the actual event itself? Mm, mm, mm. So I was really cognitive about a lot of the decisions I was making in terms of life-changing moments. I'd learned a lot of things as well from uh, the Miss World pageant when I was in London, from my fellow contestants who would share their journeys as well and tell you that it's also not easy in our countries because some of them are coming from third world countries in South America, others uh, coming from Europe. So our stories kind of helped to shape the way that we'd view life and say, okay, fine, 
I'm not going to play a victim. I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure that I change things, not only for myself, but even for the industry that I'm in and helping other people as well. So I had to make sure that my mind was in the right place to be able to go there. Because if I focused on the negative things, I don't think I'd have aspired. Okay, I just have yeah. to, to, to jump in there. Why, why, my question is, why do you think people always have negative energy or negative attitude towards uh, models? There's a lot of vices that come with uh, this industry. Obviously, there's uh, things that happen, there's temptations, girls get into trouble, boys get into trouble, and other people come in there with the wrong motives as well. So people's perceptions can also be influenced by some of those things. It's not to say that um, everything is hunky-dory. Things can actually be quite bad on the other side. But with every pageant, I think um, each pageant defines itself. The girls define themselves. One has to then look at the positives that can come out of it. I don't believe it's just pageantry alone or modeling that has got negative perceptions. All sorts of um, industries have got negative perceptions as well. It's just that because these things are more or less in the limelight, they are highlighted. And unfortunately, it discourages those with talent to actually go in there because they're afraid of also, you know, uh, getting caught up in the mess that could actually come with it. I, 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 I beg to differ or mm -hmm. to, I, I just want to disagree a little bit with you because sure. right now, everyone else, probably with everyone who's watching right now, mm -hmm. they can agree with me. Why is it more models? They are associated with a lot of scandals. Some models. Okay. <laughs> Some models. Some models. <laughs> yeah. Because. It, some models, yes, mm -hmm. but we then end up everyone being branded under the same umbrella. So I'm, I'm saying, I'm speaking on behalf of someone who's watching. They say, no, those are very my models. That's oh, why how, can I, 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 how can I put my, my, my resources or support these kids mm -hmm. at the end, those who tarnish my, 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 my company name or my brand name. Mm -hmm. So my question is, I've, I, was doing, uh, I was doing a research. Mm -hmm. I was doing a research and uh, on you, you, you seem to have managed to, 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 to keep the crown mm -hmm. and to, 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 to probably, I would say, retire uh, with, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a clean record. How did you manage to do that? I can't say I was scot-free in terms of uh, scandals, <laughs> but I think during the time that I was doing pageantry, we belonged to agencies that kind of helped to also cushion us to protect us as well and there were mandates and you had to be very um, disciplined to be able to remain successful at the time and it's not to say that there weren't bad things that were taking place back then but with the advent of social media now girls might do things and unfortunately post them or be posted that can actually compromise their positions so with me i think my idea of being an ambassador mattered more than getting myself uh, into trouble by doing the little things where you might think that I'm enjoying myself for a moment. But my vision was clear. I wanted to go to the world stage. I wanted to travel the world and see what the world had to offer. At the same time, I wanted to be that ambassador I'd been called to be, who's serving in the interests of that pageant or for the, of the country or of the continent. So it was essential that I stay out of trouble. Okay, one has to make choices, daily choices. It's not to say the temptations don't come, they do come. The men would come, all right? <laughs> They'd throw whatever they could at you. And if you were gullible, you would fall for it. But the vision was bigger yeah, than yeah. these small things, small things that in the end wouldn't matter. <laughs> for the why, okay? Right. Or you get your hair done. For what? For what, yeah. What is inside your heart and your mind need to correlate so that you're able to bring about yeah, that yeah. and you enjoy the success thank of what you. comes thank with you. that. Thank you so much for clarifying that. I wanted you to say it, not me. <laughs> you, you, you had it for yourself. Stay tuned for the third and final segment.